In my first maths cast on the vector product, I introduced the idea of a product between two vectors, which is itself a vector. I gave the definition of that product and attempted to justify the definition by showing that it had a good geometrical interpretation. I also mentioned some other applications where such a product crops up. Let me just revise the definition. The vector product between two vectors a cross b is a vector such that its magnitude is just the product of the magnitudes of a and b with the sine of the angle between a and b. The direction is taken to be at right angles or perpendicular to both a and b. But then that specification of the direction leaves us two choices one way or the other. We choose the direction to have the sense that the triple A, B, A cross B, in that order, form a right-handed system. Those four specifications that I've now written down are enough to completely determine what is meant by the vector product. The product has one very important property, that it is anti-commutative, that is, that the order we make the product in is important and if we swap the order it introduces a negative sign. If you've watched my maths class on the scalar product you'll remember that when we got to this stage of having the definition we next went on to look at what happens to the basis vectors i, j and k when you form the product of them with themselves or with each other. That led us to an alternative form for the dot product expressed in terms of the component of a vector. Well, that's exactly what we need to do here with the vector product. And the ultimate aim, again, is to end up with a component expression for the vector product of two vectors. So let's get on with it and ask about the cross products between i, j and k with themselves and with each other. Now I hope you'll recall that the cross product of a vector with itself must be the zero vector. That's because of the definition that involves sine of the angle between the, the vectors. The angle between a vector and itself is zero degrees. And the sine of zero is zero. So the vector product of, an, of a vector with itself must have magnitude zero. So it can only be the zero vector. That knowledge allows us to write down immediately the cross product of i with i, j with j, and k with k. All three of those things must be zero. Well, that bit was easy at least. Let's start with the mixed ones. What about i cross j? It's going to be a vector, but let's begin by talking about its magnitude. Its magnitude must be the length of i times the length of j times the sine of the angle between i and j. But remember, i and j are at right angles to each other. i is along the x-axis and j along the y-axis on a piece of graph paper. That means that the angle between them, 90 degrees, contributes sine of 90 equals 1. i and j are themselves unit vectors, so their lengths are both 1. So in fact, the magnitude of i cross j must be 1. That means that it's a unit vector. But now we can think about the direction. The direction must be perpendicular to both i and j. The only direction that fulfills that condition is the k direction. But remember, it could be k or it could be negative k. It must have length 1, though. So at this stage of our reasoning, we can conclude that i cross j is either k or negative k. K is a unit vector, so it has the right length, and it's at right angles to both i and j, so that has the right direction. But what is the sense? We need i, j, and i cross j, the answer to the cross product, to form a right-handed system. Let's draw our little framework of i, j, and k projected into the screen from three dimensions. Such a picture is ambiguous, so I need to tell you that I intend that j progresses into the screen, not out of it. Given that statement, can you see that i, 
turning the screwdriver towards J pushes the screw in the direction of K. That means that we want to choose the K direction, not the negative K one. I cross J must be equal to K. Well, that's kind of neat, isn't it? And convenient. And what's more, it gives us another one for free. Because if we reverse the order and write J cross I, that must introduce a minus sign. So J cross I must be negative K. There are four more products. I cross K and K cross I, and J cross K and K cross J. But if you think about it, the same reasoning must work for all of these four products. In each case, the product must have unit length. And in each case, it's the third basis vector perpendicular to the other two. So, for example, J cross K must be either I or minus I. It turns out that, in fact, the correct choice using the right hand rule is that J cross K is equal to I. And once again, that gives us the form with the reversed order for free, with the extra minus sign. The last pair is I cross K and K cross I. You can probably guess the answers. I'll write them down now. So that means we now have all nine of the possible cross products. Each of the vectors with itself and each of the vectors with the other two. That gives us the ammunition we need to expand a vector product in terms of components and simplify it. But I'm not actually going to do that in this maths cast because it's rather a long process. So I'll use a third cast to do that. Instead, I want to tell you a little trick to help you remember the order of the vectors in these cross products. What we do is draw a little circle with i, j and k spaced around it in clockwise order. Can you see now that by following the arrows in the clockwise direction we can read off automatically i cross j equals k or j cross k equals i or k cross i equals j. Those three orders are called cyclic permutations of each other. You could imagine looking at the equation i cross j equals k and pulling k off the end and taking it round to the start and then shuffling the i and the j along, leaving the cross and the equals in position. That's called cyclic permutation and it gives us one of the other equations. But it's maybe easier to visualise using the little blue circle that I've drawn here. On the other hand, if we go round the circle in the anti-clockwise direction, then we introduce a minus sign. So j cross i equals negative k, i cross k equals negative j, and so on. I hope that helps you remember these various cross products. I'm going to stop here and address the problem of writing a vector product in terms of components in a third maths cast on the topic.